to finish up uh, this discussion on Agile, uh, what is it specifically about testing? What are the testing tasks we're going to do? First, validation is not testing, right? We know that uh, validation, proving that something works, may only be one test. We can validate something with with, with one test. Testing is not uh, is not that. It's uh, 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 testing around that kind of uh, how to break software, uh, creative, interesting, useful, uh, what users do, that style um, testing is what we still have to do in Agile projects, not brain dead validation. And if we have brain dead validation, user story validation, that needs to be automated. Right? If the test is, is, is a simple, straightforward validation test, automated. There's no reason why it shouldn't be automated. Um, and, and also remember that validation is usually the happy path, and that's not what users always do, right? So it's, it's uh, 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 testing any kind of non-trivial code. Uh, we cannot rely on happy path testing. That would really be uh, a disservice to the development organization. The main skills that we need in uh, Agile testing is that, uh, that creative, exploratory, um, uh, discovery testing where we can go and investigate how uh, a piece of functionality works. By the, by the nature of Agile development, when I can write a user story and start writing the code that afternoon without uh, a significant requirements and requirements view process and without a significant design document, design review, which is fine. You know, I'm, uh, we, we can get rid of the requirements doc, we can get rid of the design doc, that's fine. We can get rid of the requirements phase, get rid of the design phase, that's fine. But during those phases, people would think about how is this going to interact, how is it going to work, what's it going to do. So that by the time the developer starts to write code, it's been, it's been thought of, or at least in some successful organizations, it's been thought through enough that you have a good idea how it's going to work. In an Agile organization, part of being Agile, dynamic, nimble, responsive to change, uh, a developer can just start coding. Well, we have to be agile ourselves to be able to go and investigate how that works, uh, develop tests on the fly, explore how it works, learn how we can break it, uh, uh, develop our testing in the context of, uh, of what we know about how the users use it, in the context of, of the uh, software, the environment that's going to be built later on. Knowing those things, we're going to be exploring that piece of functionality. We're going to be discovering how it works. Uh, that is really the crucial skill, having domain expertise, knowing what users do, knowing what the environment's going to look like in the end. Uh, that's really going to help us in our test case design. Uh, um, but the, the, the key skill is really learning how to discover what the functionality does, uh, especially in design as you go uh, development uh, organizations. The key piece of that is gray box testing. Fully understanding what is gray box testing about. What is we know what white box testing is about. We know what black box testing is about. But what does gray box testing mean? How do we go and do gray box testing? Whether it's testing at other interfaces or just a knowledge of data structures or a knowledge of um, how browsers work or a knowledge more knowledgeable testing. Moving away from black box through the UI um, I/O testing and and getting a much better grasp of. Uh, uh, knowledge about how the system is built, um, the architecture, the design of the system, uh, and, and hopefully testing at other interfaces, give us the ability to get more information about the behavior of this system under test to the team in the middle of a sprint. As they're develop developing it, we can be giving them information about how this behaves under this variety of conditions. That's the kind of testing that we need to do. Uh, also, in, in Agile, we need to focus on exploratory testing, scenario testing, unexpected uh, paths, successful paths, error paths, um, alternative paths, repeating uh, steps, uh, editing data, skipping steps, all those types of tester things that we do, um, in my experience, are often the first things that get dropped from Agile projects just because of the need for speed that when we had a little bit more time to relax into our testing, uh, even being under pressure, we managed to find time to do all those alternative things. Uh, in the Agile world, we still have to do those, but we're under more significant uh, time pressure. We also have to focus on interoperability testing. Uh, multiple moving parts, different dependencies, how pieces are going to work together, uh, um, 
testing subsystems with other subsystems, that kind of interactivity testing when design is happening on the fly, architecture is happening on the fly, we need to be doing that interdependency testing um, throughout a sprint, throughout development. Uh, we cannot say enough that automation is really essential. Uh, I don't think anybody can talk about, uh, about Agile without uh, focusing uh, on automation. I've heard people talk about uh, the, the only three things you have to know about uh, testing in the Agile world is automate, automate, automate. We cannot uh, understate just how much uh, automation means to having, to having a successful implementation of Agile. So um, I, I, I can leave it right there. If you're not automating a lot, you're probably not going to be successful in Agile. Um, so uh, another piece of testing in the Agile world that's really important that doesn't get discussed a lot is uh, being able to choose excellent test data using optimized test data. Uh, I've always been a big proponent of using intelligent data, uh, using really excellent data when you test, but again, in short cycles, uh, during a development phase, we need to really have optimal data, choose excellent data, um, running the same scenario with five different pieces of data before we say, yes, it's done. Uh, boundary conditions, null, illegal data, un uh, unexpected data, all of those types of tester things that we've been doing, but over the course of longer development cycles, we need to compress. So we really need to be thinking intelligently about uh, what's the best data that I can test this with? If I only have a couple of days to test this, what is the optimal data that I can use? So data development, focusing on data, uh, maintaining really good test data, uh, I think is even more essential in Agile development. And to summarize this, whole discussion, the most important part of testing in Agile is our ability to be fast and our ability to be responsive, to change stream in mid-development, to uh, be able to change the focus of our testing, to be able to come up with test cases on the fly, to be able to come up with excellent data on the fly, to be responsive uh, rather than following a plan rather than saying the plan says this or these are the test cases that are in our test case repository, being more responsive than following the test cases in your test case manager and you get a piece of functionality and you just uh, respond to, to uh, how it was built, to what was built. So, so being responsive, being fast is, um, you just can't be agile without that. And manual testing is just not going to cut it to be that fast and that responsive. Um, so to summarize, uh, about uh, these rapid SDLCs, Agile, XP, Scrum. The team commits to delivery, right? There's no longer a single point of failure. There's no longer a QA person. There's no longer a single uh, person who's responsible for guaranteeing quality. It's the team commits, the team owns quality. Then that's really a great step forward. There's a, a much bigger reliance on developer unit testing than there was in traditional SDLCs. That's really a great thing. Uh, testing really has to be universally understood and what testing means. There's an absolute necessity for test automation. Just can't get away with away from it. Um, can't get away without doing it. There's also a much heavy reliance on regression testing. This idea of having these uh, regression suites built from previous products or built from what's running in the uh, your product that's currently running, um, or over time. Uh, as sprints go on, building a bigger, more profound regression suite uh, and automating it uh, to give you better information on the product as a whole and not in the in the micro. So there's a much heavier reliance on regression testing. Um, there's also uh, it's also more important to be able to communicate to the team what kind of coverage we're getting, what kind of test coverage we're getting. We didn't really talk about coverage in this in this discussion. You know, there's 20 ways to talk about coverage: test case coverage, uh, user story coverage. Uh, code coverage, uh, method coverage, data coverage, environment coverage. We could talk about 20 different types of coverage that you could report. You need to be able to somehow communicate to your team how much has actually been tested. Uh, you are probably going to have much less documentation. Whatever documentation you were getting before you became Agile, you're probably going to be getting less. So we need to get used to that. That's long-term. Uh, and we need to be able to be more responsive with less documentation. And also we need to know that there may wind up being a separate phase for uh, environment performance security testing, um, a separate phase for end-to-end -end testing than we had in the past. We, that may have been part of our beta test, it may have been part of our system testing in the past. In the Agile world that may wind up being a separate phase. So that's our presentation. I hope you 
uh, learned a lot about it. Thanks.